Okay, welcome back. We are going to look at an example uh, for this, for the whole normalization process, so that you can have an idea of how you could apply this uh, to your group project. Now, this is a very small example. There's only about nine columns here we're dealing with. If you remember, your group project should be uh, quite a bit more complex than this, so it will result in uh, probably more tables than what uh, mine's going to end up with. Okay, so let's just take a look first at the unnormalized form. So we just um, take a look at what I've done here, and I've kind of made up a just kind of a mock of what I imagine a, a drug trial might look like. I'm sure that's a lot on, on everyone's mind right now is, is when are we going to have this vaccine ready? Um, I, I doubt very seriously that this is how uh, this vaccine would uh, be done, uh, would be developed in the real world, but you know, it's just an example. Okay, so as you can see here, you know, we have this patient. Uh, the way that I kind of have set this up is they come in for one shot and it's given on a certain day, and then they come in uh, like a week later, okay? All right, for a different one, and there's some different combinations of how we give it to them, okay? Now, if you notice uh, here, uh, this patient, so we kind of group it together. We kind of merge these cells together. The problem is, is that if, if we look at this, this is a row. This is the Joseph Lede row, row here. Then that means that this cell has two values in it. So does this one and this one and this one and this one and this one. And that's a problem. That's, that's, not, that's not in first normal form, right? And so what we're going to do is in order to take this and bring it into first normal form is we're going to um, take this and we're just gonna, just gonna split out those merged cells and give them their own value. So notice now every row has a single value in every column, okay? This data all goes together. So this is first normal form. Uh, one thing that you'll notice is a cell highlighting that I've done here. This is where I've identified the most likely candidate for uh, a candidate key, a primary key possibility. Okay, so what you might say is, okay, clearly none of these rows on their own, no single row on its own can be a uh, a primary key or a candidate key because there's duplicates. Remember, a primary key, no duplicates across different rows. Okay, um, and then you might say, well, well, well wait a second. <clears throat> what about the patient ID and the drug combination? We only the same patient's only going to get the same drug once, right? No, but see here, this row, here, these two rows here, same value here, same value here. Okay, so. Clearly, that is not uh, a candidate key, all right? So what we're saying is, is that the most likely candidate for a candidate key here is the patient coming in on a certain date, okay? All right. Now, I could go into more about that, but uh, just, uh, I feel that uh, it's probably just gonna be using up a lot of extra time that we don't really uh, need to use today on this. But if you have other questions about how I arrived at this, uh, then we could say, you can ask me questions and we can talk through it some more. Uh, I, I did highlight the drug ID column with a different color because if you were to say, well, what if Joseph comes in on a certain day and gets two different drugs that day? That might be possible. Okay. That might be possible because remember this is based on what's going to be true for all time, right? And so if you want to say that the combination of patient ID, drug ID, and date given, that those three together should be the primary key, I would not disagree with you. That is a possible choice. Uh, however, for this example, I have chosen to go with the patient ID, date given combination as being the primary key. Okay. So what would that mean? That would mean that the way that we would draw our functional dependency is I'm just going to use the column names uh, A, B, C, D, and so forth. Okay. So we would say A, F, 
determines B, C, D, E, G, H, and I. Okay. All right. So that would be the functional dependency here. Okay. That determines who our primary is. But notice there's some other functional dependencies, right? Like such as A determines B and C. All right. So let's see. And notice also that uh, D determines E. And that G determines H and I. Okay. So, <clears throat> this should tell you, okay, so we should know what this is, right? This is an example of a partial dependency. And remember, we're going to try to move this into second normal form. Second normal form is all about getting rid of partial dependency. We only want full functional dependency. So since there's a partial dependency that exists here, we're going to take these three columns here, and we're going to make them their own table. Let me copy. Let me copy these over. Into this so you can see, so we can keep kind of track of these. Okay. So here we've taken that patient column, that, sorry, that patient information, and made it its own column, our own table. But we've left the patient ID stuff here. So notice now we don't keep patient information in our main table anymore. Okay. So what that would mean is. A determines B and C, uh, but here combination of now uh, a different set of information. So it's going to be A D of the main table determines B C E F and G. Okay, and then we've also got some other stuff here where uh, this would instead of being B and C, B and E, this would be now B and C. And instead of being GHI, this would be E, F, and G. Okay. All right. So now we have a second normal form data set. But we're not in third normal form. Remember, third normal form is this whole idea of the transitive dependency. So here, C is determined by B, right? But B is not part of the primary key, so it's not a partial dependency. It's a transitive dependency. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these and make them these right here and make them into their own table. And the same thing is true about this one here. This given by right here. Okay. And notice here, CV1, CV2 is going to have its own drug name. PL is going to have its own. And John and Jane over here, there they, there's only be two rows for them. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take them and make them their own table. So now we, we kept the same main table with those columns removed. But now we have, and I've named it employee. You can name it whatever you want. With just those two rows, drug table with just those three rows, right? And how do we know what the drug name that patient ID 123, patient Joseph, how do we know what drug they were given on March 20th? Well, we look to the drug table. Okay. Now, again, what I need to remind you of before we go into the example using the MySQL is, again, all these different tables here, right? That looks confusing to us as humans because of the way that we process information. We might look at something like this and say, this makes more sense to us, right? But the problem is, is that this is much harder for a computer to be able to figure out very quickly certain information. And it also exposes us to update anomalies. It exposes us to what happens if Somebody comes in and says, oh, COVID, yeah, you were going to rename that something else. Maybe COVID vaccine one, we found out, hey, that one really works. So we're going to say, we're just going to call it COVID vaccine works. 
right? But what happens if they only did that here? Well, now what about this? Which one of these is correct? Well, you might say, well, clearly it's this one. That's the one that makes the most sense. But the computer doesn't know. The computer doesn't know which one of these is correct. Right? It only knows that this results in this one time and this value results in this a different time. Okay. All right. So this would be our third normal form. One of the things that you may notice is what, I, what I've done here is I've also kept track of how much different cells have information in them. So if we look in the uh, first normal form where everything had a, every cell had a piece of information, there were 90 pieces of information in our original data set. When we moved it into second normal form, we didn't reduce it by a whole lot. We reduced it by some, right? Because even though you might say, well, there's some duplicate information here, but all of these were reduced by half, right? And finally, in the third normal form, the only cells that have information, 67 cells have information now. Okay? All right. So this is a graphical representation, but what I want to do with the remaining time that we have is I want to go look at uh, how to do this using MySQL. Okay? So I have created the table because this is going to take a little bit of time, so I'm just going to show you how to do this. Okay? So if we were to say, okay, I want to, let's say we had started off with no tables whatsoever. You would say, okay, I'm going to create a table. Okay, I want to call this, because it won't let me name it the same thing as something that already exists. So there were nine columns. Okay. And what you can do is you can put this information in here, okay, you can say uh, what is it? patient ID, patient name, patient surname, uh, what was next? Drug ID, okay, drug ID, drug name, uh, given by, right? No, a uh, date, date given. Given by ID, given by name, and given by screen. Okay, and then what you can do is you can say, say, okay, oh, this should be an integer, uh, this should be a bar chart, we'll call it bar chart 20, same thing with this one. Okay, drug ID should be an integer, drug name, you can call, actually, no, drug ID is supposed to be an integer. Is supposed to be a bar chart. We'll say a bar chart three. Okay. Drug name should be a bar chart. We'll call it twenty. Okay. Date given. We can say that'll be a date. Given by should be a bar chart. Twenty. Uh, no, sorry. Given by ID should be an integer. Given by name can be a bar chart 20. And given by surname can also be a bar chart 20. Okay. All right. And then what I want you to do for your group project is I want you to give me this SQL. Okay. I want you to say that I created this table. That's what creates the table. This user interface does not create the table. This query creates the table. This user interface, this user interface generates this query. Okay. All right. So go back in here. So now, if we'll notice that. Now, um, we put all of. See, I want to delete from back to now. Okay. Now, what I want to do is I want to Delete all the rows. Okay, so now 
now we've got no rows in here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to insert into now there are multiple ways that you could insert data. You could insert and you could go in uh, value by value and put it in there. You could also do what I've done here, which is create a bunch of insert statements based on my Excel spreadsheet. Okay. All right. So now if I go back and look at my data, oh, there it is. It's all there. Great. So that's the first thing. You need to show me a create table statement. Okay. You need to show me uh, the insert statement. Okay. Uh, now we also need to we also need to create a primary key. So what was our primary key we decided? Patient ID and date. Now, if there's any duplicate, so like if I just did patient ID on its own, I'm going to try to say, okay, make that a primary key, right? It'll tell me I can't do that. Okay. Um, I do just patient ID, right? Because there's a duplicate entry, right? Okay, so let me instead, what was it? Patient ID and date given. Successfully executed. I need you to show me this. I need you to show me this query for your group project. Okay. I primary to All right. Looks like we're gonna uh, not be able to do the whole thing today, but I do want to at least show you how to create this first table here, and then you'll know how to do it for this other table as well. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create our table for our patient information. Okay. So we want to create a patient table, patient name surname. The first thing is we need to create a table. We're going to call it the patient table. It's going to have three columns. It's going to have an ID column. That's an integer. It's going to have a name column. That is a bar char 20. And it's going to have a surname. Column. That's also a bar chart. I'm going to preview it. You need to show me this. For every table that you create for your group project, I need to see a create table statement. I'll save it. Uh, I think it's from when I did this before that I did that. So let's go ahead and uh, create, let's call it patient one. Call it patient one. That should be fine because I'm going to change it. Name, ID, name, surname, bar char 20, bar char. Okay. Now we have this patient table, all right, but it doesn't have any data in it, all right? What we need is we need to get the data from here, from here into here, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to, instead of going line by line or anything like that, what we're going to do is we're going to use an insert statement. We're going to insert into, we're going to insert into the patient table, patient one. ID, name, and surname. So now that's the co that's the order, right? And where are we getting this data from? We are going to get it using a select query. We're going to select patient uh, from tracking v dot. We're going to select patient ID v dot patient name v dot dot patient surname. From vaccine, and we're going to insert that into patient one. Now, this is not going to work. I'm going to copy it so you can see why. We're going to rerun it just like Ah. Uh, it did work. Now, notice there's duplicate entries. That, that's because we forgot to do the primary key thing. Okay, so we're going to delete from wait one. And we also notice. 
Because what we're going to do is we're going to go back right here. We're going to make this our primary key. Just like before, I need you to show me this altered table statement. So now we're going to run this. And it's going to tell me no. It's going to tell me because it's a duplicate entry for the primary key. That's because if I were to try to run this select query, what's going to happen? going to give me all these, but this is, we're trying to put this into the primary key, and that's a problem. So, what we need to do instead, we need to do something very simple, is we just need to add the distinct keyword there, and everything should be fine. Okay, so now we need to see this for your, uh, for your group project. Now, if I browse this, okay, that's all the same still. But if I look at the patient one table, there we go. Okay. So now, the one, a couple more things I want you to do. Okay. So I want you to go into the vaccine UNF. I want you to, uh, I want you to alter table vaccine UNF. And I want you to add foreign key. For patient ID references patient one ID. Okay, so now we have a foreign key, and you're going to have to show me this for your group project. So now we have a foreign key. In the vaccine UNF table, if we look at the structure here, right, patient ID has a, uh, it's going to have a foreign key to, right, have a foreign key to the patient table. Okay. And one last thing you need to do. Because now patient name and surname is information that we now keep over here in the patient table instead, right? So what you now need to do we need to go into the vaccine UNF table, and I want you to drop these columns. Okay. I want you to show me this query. Okay. Alter table, drop patient name, patient surname, right? Drop those columns from there. So now that column doesn't exist here. And if we look at this example here, you should see the patient name, patient surname no longer exist in our main table anymore. They exist in our patient table now. Over here. Okay. Um, then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to do this again for the other two tables. Okay. So we're going to create table. We're going to insert into table using the distinct keyword. We are going to create a foreign key. We're going to alter table by adding a foreign key. And then, <clears throat> and then we are going to, uh, finally, we are going to drop the column from the original table. Okay. I hope that's entirely clear. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, one other thing I do want to show you is it does it here. Was, uh, if in MySQL is notice that this patient ID has a foreign key to the patient table. If I click on this, it should bring me to the patient table, right? For that information. So that's pretty cool. It can very quickly get me from one table to another, all right? I hope this is all very clear. I've run out of time to be able to explain any more on this video. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Please do not hesitate to contact me. And I look forward to seeing your group project. All right. Good luck and um, have a good afternoon.